and welcome to the Lillian McMorris Show. I'm Lillian McMorris. Our first guest is going to give us some really good information. There are so many parents out there that are wondering, how am I going to get my child to school, to college? How can I pay for it? And at this time of year, most scholarship applications are pretty much in and decisions have been made. But CSN has some available, and Guy Amato is here to talk to us. Welcome, Guy. Thank you, Lillian. Nice to be here. Thank you so much. We appreciate you being here. We always talk about different things that are happening at CSN. That's one of my favorite places, as you know. Mm -hmm. And um, you being the Director of Community Relations, you know just about everything that is happening. <laughs> and one would like to think you would that. Like, <laughs> one would like to think that anyway. Today, let's talk about the scholarships sure. and availability thereof, because you have several and we can put in or have our students put in until June, until June 12, right? That's correct. Okay, so, uh, let's talk we're, about that we're in, process. We're in a critical period if you can get uh, the applications in really starting with May 1st mm -hmm. and get them in now if you can get online. Um, get them in now and between now and June uh, is a critical period because that's the head of the line. Right. So there's money available, the scholarships are funded, mm -hmm. uh, and as they are awarded, later in the year there's less and less money and right. even if you qualify for a scholarship there may not be enough for the award now it's pretty if if you're computer savvy it's easy if you have some challenges we may have some challenges getting there but the first thing is of course is to go to and we'll have it on on the screen is csn.edu that's correct and then click on admissions that's correct and then I found a little box over there on the right, right hand side once you get to the admission page mm -hmm. uh, there's a lot of information to guide you through the processes but right. on the right hand side there's a box with some critical links and one of them is scholarships okay there's two links for scholarships there's uh, academic scholarships uh, which are of a certain kind of outside money for academic achievement mm -hmm. But then there's the CSN scholarships, Correct. and these scholarships are targeted for a wide array of students and a wide array of programs. So if you click on the link for CSN scholarships, it'll take you to a page where you create an account if you already don't have right. one. You have an email address, you make a password, it immediately gives you access. Mm -hmm. And then it opens up a window where you can then look at the scholarships that are available. You can select the scholarship group by the school you want to go to. In other words, what your major might want to be. Mm -hmm. Or by alphabet alphabetical order. Mm -hmm. Or you can just scan all of them. You may not be sure what to major in yet. Right. You may not be sure what's available and what your interests are. But the one thing we do know about CSN is so many of the credits are transferable. Yes. So therefore, if you're interested in something and you just want to start there. Right. There are a myriad of scholarships. I was looking the other day, and my goodness, there's so many of them. There are, uh, I don't have a final count on how many, but dozens and dozens and dozens and dozens <laughs> of, of scholarships. Right. And, and uh, various areas. In various areas, and for different required uh, requirements. Mm -hmm. Not all of them are based on your grade performance. No. Many of them are based on need, yeah, income. If you were a Girl Scout. If you're African American, if you're Hispanic, if your parent worked at such and such a thing, I mean, there are so many things that you can slide right into, but the basic thing is to fill out that application. Right. And it makes it easy because you can fill out the application once, and my understanding is that that will be your application for a number of the scholarships, mm -hmm. that you don't have to keep filling an application out for each individual Now, let's talk to parents, though, mm -hmm. because that... See, I remember last year, and, and being on the selection committee for this, there were some, unfortunately, the parents did not fill out their portion. Right. How important is that? The FAFSA form, it's called. It's mm -hmm. a federal form. It's right. used throughout the United States, and it's a way of verifying the income of the household. Okay. And that has everything to do with financial aid for your mm -hmm. student, it has everything to do with some of the scholarships that are financially need-based. Mm -hmm. Some are not, but some are, and that's the qualifying yes. document that they use. So scholarships, financial aid, loans, the amount of money you can borrow mm -hmm. that you're going to pay back at some point is right. also based on your FAFSA form. Right. And whether you are in an upper income bracket or a lower income bracket, everyone benefits from filling out that form. Okay. Again, how important is it that these parents take the time to do that? Um, if you want help financially for your child to go to college you need to on do any it. level, that has to be filled has out. Be it done. is the one thing you really must, must do. And, and then that impacts so many of our students because the parents won't take the time to do it. Right. As you know, 
CSN is a community college. It is the community's college, as mm -hmm. Dr. Richards, our president, mm -hmm. likes to say. And I, I like to reiterate that because right. it really is. Um, and we always had a policy of open access. Anybody that wants to come can come. Mm -hmm. Things have changed a little bit now. There are requirements. And because we want people to be successful when they come, Correct. we want to make sure that they are taking the tests that they need so that we can gauge how much uh, help they might need in their math or their mm -hmm. reading so that they can begin to do college level work. Right. And so qualifying the student as they come in for their skill levels, their interests are all very important at the front end now. We're mm -hmm. putting a lot of resources and bringing students and in that's a good and understanding thing. who that's they a good are. Thing. The financial piece is another critical part of making sure that when they get there, mm -hmm. they can continue their education. So parents, fill out the FAFSA form. It is a little complex. Uh, I did it for my daughter, mm -hmm. and it is complex. And if you need help, there are there's help there's out resources. there. There's resources. There are resources out there. So. Please do that for your students' sake. And for students, there are special, you can get a scholarship if you want to be nurse. Mm -hmm. There's scholarships just for nurses. Right. There's scholarships by the school. So yes, for health sciences, anything in health sciences, you'll mm -hmm. find scholarships for the health sciences courses. Well, that's what we were saying. There's everything there. Now, Guy, you do so much within our community. Um, one of the things that I've got a whole lot of organizations. And I love collaborations. That's one thing that, as you know, I started mm -hmm. many years ago. But there is one now called the Promise Neighborhood My Brother's Keeper. Yes. And you're a big part of that because this, being able to make sure there's access to education to young people within our community. That's correct. And um, I'm very privileged to sit with the My Brother's Keeper mm -hmm. initiative uh, in learning where there are interests and needs to collaborate mm -hmm. where and how the college can help in mm -hmm. ensuring that their information is available to students, that we're reaching out right. uh, to communicate what's available for students and right. for the parents and for to parents. understand how to gain access. And parents to can go to school because well, our community college reflects our population. It does. And the average age of a student at CSN mm -hmm is, I think, 27 years old. Yep. So we have a lot of folks that come to And that's come college. down, actually, since I was yeah. there on, on the President's Advisory Board because having mothers and fathers that were finishing up and just trying to advance. Right. But you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to give your, uh, I mean, of course, the, the address, the website for the school, okay. but I'm going to give your email address, okay? Yes, if you have a question or you can't find the part of the website that has this, mm -hmm. um, you can email me, okay. uh, and I will send an email back with a link to the page where okay. you need to be. I'm not a financial advisor. No. I can't Just counsel general you information on it. to how to get there. And I needed help with the FAFSA form, so I don't know that I can be <laughs> very help. And I want to be very careful about setting that expectation. I'm okay. community relations. I, uh, I like to go out and see where we can help mm -hmm. uh, and where the resources well, of the college can be that's what it's all about, applied, and I so. want them to be able to reach you. We want you to go to www.csn.edu and click on Admissions on the right-hand side of Scholarships. And if you have a problem finding that, not filling it out, but just finding it, you can always contact Guy, Guy Amato. It's Guy, G-U-Y dot Amato, A-M-A-T-O, at csn.edu, or he can be called at 702-651-4272. That's his office, 702-651-4272. We've been talking to Guy Amata, who's the Director of Community Relations, College of Southern Nevada, outreach in all of our community, and we just want to make sure that ever, all the information is out there for people who do want to go. Thank you very much for the opportunity. We appreciate you being here. We're going to take a little break, and we'll be right back. And welcome back. We're just having a lot of fun. I, I am so happy to have someone that I met, gosh, it must have been about 10 years ago yeah, now, maybe? About 10 years yeah, ago. Yeah, Turnberry Place. Mm -hmm. A decade? A Do decade. we look a decade older? No, we certainly, we certainly don't. don't. Time just stops for us. You know? How yeah. about that? 
Oh, Kelly Clinton gosh. Holmes. Hi. Hi, Kelly. Hi, Lillian McMorris. How are you? I'm good. I'm, I'm, I'm happy to be here because I'm a fan. I watch you. Oh, you're sweet. And yeah. I'm a fan. I adore you. You, you do? keep me in stitches. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you do. I love it. I love it. I love and it. Love Vivian, you. your combination of entertainer, comedian, uh, nervous wreck. Let, oh, let's yeah. ask all, let, you know, we can oh, add all neurotic. Of that. That's, <laughs> that's my secret. That's my, my thing. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll ask you to sing a little bit and oh, you're a little yeah, actress really? and do all of those things. No, that's okay. Go on. No, we're not going to okay. do the voice things. Okay. All right. But impressionist, now that I do like. Oh, yeah. Yes. Well, that's what, when you're crazy, Yeah. that means there are a lot of people in here with you. So that's why you have to get those voices out. Let's see if I can find some people. <laughs> I, I remember there's a Lucille Ball in there. There's a Carol Burnett in there. Well, that, those two are my inspiration. I, I don't think you can impersonate them, but you those do. are the people who you made me who made you who you want are. to do a bunch of characters okay. and, and to just be an entertainer. Right. Those two are most responsible. Now, you have been here. Now, you moved from New Jersey mm -hmm. to Las Vegas, and you've been yes. here forever. Yeah, we don't and have to say decade. how many years. Yeah. Well, that decade was good right. enough. 1900s. Yeah. Okay. Oh, Lord. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a while. It's been a while. I'm a Las Vegas. But you know what? All of the things you've done, and it's all been you, the creativity within entertainment. That is you. That's your personality. Thank you. Yeah. Well, like, like I said, I was probably seven when I first saw the Carol Burnett show, <laughs> you know, and I was like trying to climb into the television. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it, it, that was like, it was. it's nice to have the dream when you're that young. Yes. So then you know where you're going, you right. know. And so I've always, uh, you know, just kept in the entertainment field, singing, acting, and wigs are also a big part of my life. Well, that changes your look. Oh, yeah. That just changes the look. And then you can get in the character. Oh, yeah. A lot of times that comes first. <laughs> trying on kooky wigs and, and mustaches and things. Now I'm trying to shave my mustache. Stop it. It started with fake mustaches. <laughs> <laughs> We should have that, that picture true? up, shouldn't we, with that oh, little yeah. mustache I'll get, I'll and I'll get you a shot get of that. Picture of that. Oh. But every Monday night, you're at the bootlegger. Yes. And mm -hmm. that is such a wonderful show because, I mean, I've been there a couple of times. Not only the great food, of course, we have uh -huh. to be thankful for, but the entertainment is outstanding, and you never know who's going to show. That's what I say when I first start the night out. I say, if you've not been here before, get ready because there's going to be a show happening here. We don't know what it is yet. But people come, entertainers, mm -hmm. some of them working in the hotels, mm -hmm. casinos, shows. They come after work just to play with us. That's that's part of the magic on Monday. It is. Is there's something in the walls there at the it bootlegger. Is. But they come and they say, I, I'm going to sing this song. I've never done this song, but I don't want to sing the songs I sing every night. Mm -hmm. And someone like Clint. You're trying or, something different. Yeah, mm -hmm. Sheena Easton has mm -hmm. been in. Um, um, the Righteous Brothers, mm -hmm. not the Righteous Brothers, no, but, but Bill Bill Medley. They've come in and they they mm -hmm. s sing and improv with the band, and then we get a young up and coming talent, undiscovered yet. Mm -hmm. Give them and some they, stage yeah. time, and that's that's exactly you it know, right and that's there. what people need is that stage time. Exactly. Now you've got something just a little bit bigger coming. Yeah. And Ron Dakar has opened up an event center, which mm -hmm. is right off of Las Vegas Boulevard in Charleston. It's very and close. And you to here. have yes. a huge show there at the end of May. May May thirtieth is May thirtieth. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Um, it's it, and he calls it the Clinton Club. The Clinton Club. You mentioned the Sterling Club, uh -huh. and and that was such a great it hang. Was. Same kind it of was. idea. People would come in, and we do all kinds of music. Mm -hmm. Some people would sit in. So. The Clinton Club is just me doing my my thing mm -hmm. with my four piece band okay. um, and special guests, and there'll be comedy mixed in. And we don't characters. know what you're going to come out as. Yeah, I yeah. And seeing the way his stage is, you float through the audience, come out of the bar. Who knows? Isn't it a beautiful room? It is. It is. It's it's it really is. like mm -hmm. old style Vegas. It is it's old like, school. Yeah, you it is. step into that room. Mm -hmm. Outside, you're you're like I don't know what I'm in for. These two big doors open, and you're in this. You're in this classy, room that's like right. old school, like little stage, just enough right. for your four piece band. Yes. The little little curtain that goes, you know, like oh, like we used yes, to have a curtain, a curtain, <laughs> like we I used miss to curtains. have a real curtain, you know? Yeah, yeah, and and they have buffet, food, and, food, yeah. and mm -hmm. it's just it's just beautiful. He really built. What a, do you a want? What is your vision for the night? 
What do you What do you want us to experience? Well, I want you to experience great music, okay. and there'll be some heartfelt songs, and there'll be some comedy. Yeah, and you're there. Be, There's yeah. going to be comedy. <laughs> that's, that's the bottom line. And, and le- uh, special guests. Often I have, like last the last show I did there, I had Dennis Blair, who's a comedian who worked with um, George Carlin okay. for many years, mm-hmm. and Rodney Dangerfield and Joan Rivers. Well, he, he did his own thing. He has some original songs, and he cracked up the audience. But then later I bring him back, and we did um, uh, two of the Beatles. We did Ringo Starr and Paul McCartney. Okay. He was Paul. Yeah. I was Ringo. You were Ringo. I might bring that back this time because I enjoyed so? the drums What about so your much. little one-woman show? Are you ever going to do, uh, do that for us again? Yes, I am. Okay. I'm gearing up. Okay. I'm gearing up. Because I miss that. And it's, you haven't done it in a while. You're right. It has. It, I haven't done it in a while, and I may do it at the Ronda Car Center. Okay. But see, I'm also building it, and and I'm ultimately I want it to be a one woman theater piece. Okay. Mixing the music and the comedy, but also some of the see stuff, your life story. Something kind of about stuff. being 80 years old. And Boy, right. you're good. <laughs> Boy, she's good. This, this is. This, I feel like I'm on Barbara Walters. See? Are you gonna make me cry and no, stuff no, too? No, no, no. We're not gonna cry. You're We're not good. Cry. You do. You do. You cry. Do the research. No, you, you know, but you paying attention is the thing, though. Yeah. But see, we've been here for a minute. I was born here. Yes. We won't you tell when you came here? here. Yeah, this is home. Oh wow. So I know when you came. And so, oh, you do. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. All right. All right. We, see, she doesn't want to talk about that part. She's a girl. All right. <laughs> no, nah, I really don't. No, mind. I'm. I'm. Let's highlight this because we definitely want people to come out to the bootlegger on Monday nights. And what time do you start? We start at nine o'clock. Nine o'clock. Give everybody time to eat because see, what I do is make dinner reservations. So yes. then I have my seat right there against That's the wall. That's perfect. Yeah. And and you know what's so great is a lot of these people return customers we mm-hmm. have, and they're 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 friend fan friends. Mm-hmm. And then if you go and late, like us. I sometimes yeah. do, you have to sit at the bar. Well, and that's no not seats. so bad, but it's great. Yeah. See, that's still a great get the problem music. to have. Still get the music. And then we've got May the 30th, 8 o'clock that's at right. Ronda Carr's Event Center um, right on, yes. on Las Vegas Boulevard in Charleston. And I, what I'm going to do is send them to your wels- website. Thank you. Um, KellyClinton.com. That's Get it. your name. www.kellyclinton.com. And there is a phone number for your assistant. Um, yes. 702-810-0995. Tickets are still available for the Ronda Car for the Clinton, the Clinton Room. Club. Yeah, the Clinton the Club. The Clinton, Clinton Club. So for more information, go to the website, give her a call. She's absolutely fabulous. She will keep you in stitches. <laughs> Even if the guest isn't good, I tell you what, she'll come out and make them good. <laughs> I have seen you do it. <laughs> Kelly Clinton, everybody, thank you thank so you, much. Lillian. I appreciate you thank being you. here. Thank you. Wonderful. We'll take a little break and we'll be right back. I'm not too sure what we're going to come back with, but you're going to enjoy it. <laughs> the Lillian McMorris Show is produced by Tigo and Associates Productions. Multi-camera shoots either in our studio or on location. That's Tigo and Associates Productions. Give us a call at 702-509-7728. And now, I've got the hardest working man. I don't care where I am, and I go out a lot. <laughs> Taking the stage and singing an absolutely wonderful, it could be a ballad, it could be a love song, it can be a r- old rhythm and blues, it can be a spiritual or gospel. I mean, your genre is unbelievable. Please welcome Mr. Ken Young. I'm glad to be here. Glad I to be am here. so happy you're here. I finally made it to your, to your show. <laughs> I don't play. Fine. Don't play. Twenty years ago, you were on my, oh my show. God. Don't, don't play. <laughs> I'm only twenty-one. <laughs> <laughs> you were just a baby right, singing, right. just a baby, a baby singing, crib, you know, right? Yeah. Singing, la, right, la, la, right. La. Well, welcome back. I'm glad welcome to be here. Back. Glad to be back. And you have graduated in such a way. I'm trying to come up. I can't believe it. I mean, we. You've only been in Vegas since, what do you say, 1982? 1982, August of 82. Okay, and the Air Force, you came because yes. of being in the service, right? Yes. So we met shortly thereafter. Correct. Okay. Correct. Polo Club. Polo Club. Um, <laughs> yes, that's dating it, right? right. Dating it. Yeah, you know, Jockey back. Club. Yes. Yep. Yes. I mean, there was there was some good yes. times. That's when uh, live entertainment was really, really big. But yeah. yeah, and you know what? And then we went down in the low, right. and we didn't hear from Ken Young. Because crafting. live entertainment was kind of at a at a standstill. 
So you hooked up and left us. Well, no, I was doing some other things. Then I went back to my gospel roots mm -hmm. at that time and really was just concentrating on doing just gospel. Okay. Um, then at a time, I had an opportunity to go out with a national artist, with uh, Gladys Knight. With Gladys Knight, So right. for 13 years, I was out on the road with her. So right. I was, you know, That didn't stop you from entertaining here, though. No, it's I like pop When up. you came home, you just, like, popped up anywhere. Yeah, I pop up What's every... he doing here? <laughs> or you'd get off, like, like Kelly would say, we get off the stage and we go someplace else right. and sing. Right. And that's right. exactly what you do. But the last few years, you have just been all over the place. Yeah, two years ago, I took the opportunity to step out on my own. Uh, I had been with Gladys like, for 13 years, and it was time for change. Okay. And uh, she really welcomed, you know, the opportunity for me to go out and do some other things. And mm -hmm. we're still, you know, in touch, still in great friends. So the last two years, I've just been out just doing a lot of stuff. You yes, know, just having a ball. you are. Let's talk about some of that stuff. Well, I started, got, got back to doing some of my R&B and right. jazz, uh, of course, still doing gospel. That's, you know, that's gonna, always going to be my foundation. Mm -hmm. Been able to perform with some wonderful bands here in town, uh, with some wonderful folks. I've just been having a ball. And you had time to do a project, even. Yes, uh, I put out uh, my gospel project with an EP, Healing Rain. Mm -hmm. Uh, worked with a couple local producers and put some stuff together. I'm, you know, really proud of I'm it. I'm loving it because I was looking at some of the names like Speechless, I Want to Be Ready, and of course the title cut, Healing Rain. Talk about that. Healing Rain was, it's, it's a type of song that it has a universal approach and it's talking about all the troubles of the world and talking about one of the things that could bring us peace would be the healing rain. Mm -hmm. It's universal. Um, on the project, I did some other things that I like. Um, I'm a closet stepper, you know, Chicago style stepper. <laughs> so I did a gospel style. He said closet right. stepper. I'm really good at home, you know, when I'm in my room. But <laughs> not when I get out, not in the shower. You don't want to slip and fall. No. So after when you get out no, in your room. No. Okay. When gotcha. I get out in public, I'm okay. not so great. Uh, but did something like that. Um, I like the DC go go sound. Mm -hmm. So I did a gospel go go song. So oh, I did, wow. you know, some things that Look I really, really enjoyed and wanted to do. Okay, and we're going to give some information as to why we get, where we can find you. Yes. Now, in the community, and, and this is the thing that I really love about you, is you entertain. We see you, we, we love you, but then you also have a rapport with our kids. Yes. With the young people in the community. And I remember that my baby's 37, and I remember you in the schools when she was in school. So 24 years with Clark County School District Police. Yes. What is it? What has that brought you? Because that's a long time to deal with young people and seeing the changes and watching them grow and what we used to be able to say to those students. You found a way. You can't say that anymore. <laughs> you have to update. You know, it's like uh, language is something like and it kind of like software. You have to continually update because mm -hmm. the kids are always changing the game. Uh, the last 24 years for me have been great. I've had an opportunity to watch kids. Um, I've had an opportunity to mentor. I think our count is at about 35 young men right now. Mm -hmm. And it's so awesome. The reward is when they come back and say, here's my son. Uh, this is what I'm doing. Right. I'm, I'm a CEO. I have my own company. Or I have the corner office. I've got this. I've done yes. that. Their accomplishments. And these are the kids that I came in contact with them because they weren't doing the right things. Mm -hmm. And to see their turnaround, to see the transition, the transformation is awesome. Right. And, and what does that do for you? I, it kind of reassures me that, you know, I'm doing some something right. Mm -hmm. um, the things that were put into me, you know, as a young man, my mom and dad always made sure that they surrounded me with positive people. Mm -hmm. And the giveaway was it makes sure that when you get the opportunity, you pass it back. And that's what I want to talk about is mentoring, giving that opportunity and passing it on. How important is mentoring, not only you as a professional, but some of the young men that are out there, that are, they're on their way working up, but there's other young men who need to see them and see the steps. Well, there was a couple great things that have been said by some great people. Um, Miles Monroe, rest in peace, he said, die empty. He said, so make sure that you're giving away, passing on all those things that have been given to you. The things that make you who you are, the things that make you successful, um, the mistakes that you make. Mm -hmm. Make sure that you pass that information on to the upcoming generation. He says, nothing worse than a runner to die with the baton in his hand. Wow. You know, and that was a deep thought. I was like, that's a deep that, thought. That's deep, you know. 
So I've always tried to live Pass by that to make sure that I pass things on, uh, whether it be my kids or other kids or community kids. Mm -hmm. I have so many community kids, yes, nephews and nieces. Uh, uh, unrelated, you have yes. a lot of community yes, kids. Yes, yes, yes. And they look at you, they look up to you, they follow you, that uniform. When you walk through the halls, it's a total different respect. Yes. It is, indeed. Yes. It is, indeed. It's know. been great, you know, to go into the different communities and they see a person like me, and I tell them, you know, my background, where I came from, originally from Oakland, California, so the odds of me surviving and making it and, and attaining the things that I've done were way against me. Mm -hmm. But look where you are. Yeah, you know, by the grace of by God. By the grace of God. Yeah. So go I. Definitely. And you have done it, and we appreciate you not only being a mentor to our students, being a wonderful entertainer within our community and around the world. Where can we see you? Where can we see you other than walking the halls of the schools, <laughs> after school, adult entertainment? Where can we right see you? Right now, I'm doing a lot of Neil Soul. Okay. Uh, so I'm working with... Um, the Star One Devin. All Stars, okay. with uh, Devin, mm -hmm. uh, Corey Mason, mm -hmm. and we're doing things every Sunday night uh, okay. out at the Blue, Blue Martini. Martini. We're doing a Neo Soul Sunday night. Okay. Uh, we do Neo Soul out at the Aliante every other Friday. Okay. Uh, I've been working with Lady S, uh, Miss Shelley. Oh, and I saw that show at Sunset, Sun, mm -hmm. somewhere. And you guys, it's like you've been singing together since birth. I right. mean, you gel so well. Yeah, good entertainers. You know, it's, it's good to work with good entertainers. I've been mm -hmm. working out with uh, Greg Austin. Yes. Um, so I've been be able to work around some great people. I've even had an opportunity a while back to sit in on Kelly Clinton's show once. Mm -hmm. uh, had a ball. Had a Haven't ball. Haven't had a chance to make it back yet. Yeah. But I'm but, going uh, back. We're, we're all going to go back. Yes. We're all going to go back. And actually, back. We matter of fact, we need to all get together and go to our May thirtieth show as well. Not only out at the Bootlegger. Anyway, we're just pressing. We're making sure it's info entertainment. On today's show, this is the Lillian McMorris Show. We want to thank Tigo and Associates, especially for putting up with me, and that she does and has for 15 years now. We appreciate that. <laughs> and Cox Entertainment and the Sands and Paragon and all of you for watching Lillian McMorris. And this is Mr. Ken Young. Kelly Clinton was with us today. Guy Amato told us about scholarships. So you've just learned so much. So Cox Communication, see how much information you're giving out right here in our community. I'm Lillian McMorris, and we'll talk to you next time.